Welcome, and for the sake of consistency, I'm still going to do the SmackDown that just happened on May the 24th. And immediately following this recording, I'm going to right away record my Saudi Arabia one in the very unlikely event that you still want to hear my thoughts on what went down on SmackDown because I'm a little bit behind because of real life stuff. So that was really loud. So let's get right into it. Right here, we have Triple H stating that the winner, the king and queen tournament will get a title shot at SummerSlam. Bianca versus Nia Jax was actually a really nice match. I loved both of their outfits because this was in Saudi Arabia, this SmackDown. And uh, because they have like, you know, different rules and stuff like that. So it was very stylish what Nia was wearing. I was actually really enjoying these outfits quite a bit. Nia did well. I thought I thought she did. And uh, it was nice to see her win. Backstage. Yes, sorry. Backstage, Indy and Candice are clearly heel now because Indy Hartwell was going, uh, talking trash to Jade Cargill who had uh, hurt her knee. And then um, Jade Cargill came to watch over her to make sure that they weren't going to try anything. Grayson Waller and Austin Theory for the Waller Effect show. Carmelo Hayes came out first instead of LA Knight. He was talking some smack. It ended up in in a fight with the Street Profits coming out to uh, to help out L.A. Knight. And then they did a six-man tag, and all of them went at it. And L.A. Knight and the Profits won that match. It was pretty good. As always, like I said, I find the matches, <coughs> excuse me, for the most part, always pretty decent, generally speaking. Cody Rhodes runs into Randy Orton quickly backstage for a quick handshake. Give me a second here. Sorry, I had a throat tickle. It was driving me nuts. In 2026, SummerSlam will be a two-night extravaganza in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I butchered how you write it. I don't care. I know what I was trying to say. Cody and Logan Paul both come down to the ring. Cody talks about Logan, likely having another pair of brass knuckles on him. They did a pat-down. He did, in fact, have another one. I just thought that part of the segment was weird. I don't like the brass knuckle gimmick thing because he already has titanium steel plated fist or does he kind of like the whole Lex Luger thing with the elbow and I just kind of feel like with how amazing Logan Paul is does not need those knuckles he really 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 just doesn't need them and Cody Rhodes was going on saying you know what you're not just some YouTuber fly-by-night. Because this guy can go, like I said, he is so disgustingly impressive. Logan Paul. And he's someone that I used to just trash talk, like, in general about. Not, like, in WWE, like, before WWE. I just did not like him. And, uh, anyhow, maybe I'll make a video on that at some other point. But, uh, yeah. And backstage, Randy Orton with Byron Saxton basically talking about... Tama, uh, Tamatanga, who for me is almost like crazy. Because you're crazy and you're strong doesn't mean to be the leader. But it is interesting to see Solo in the role that he's in. Um, yeah. Then Chelsea Green versus Bailey, the champ. Chelsea was actually, actually, helps if I could speak, actually looking pretty good. And this goes back to what I used to say about Chelsea. She's made to do what she does in the ring but the weird rose plant move i don't i don't get what that is no offense to bailey and then chelsea was just so easily taken out with having had very little you know offense thrown on her aj styles backstage with nick aldis and he was pleading to face the winner of the logan cody match just to give him one more chance and nick said on a personal level absolutely from a business standpoint Sorry, I can't. And AJ actually handled it quite well. Didn't flip out like we would expect him to do. And, uh, yeah. Vignette promo with Andrade was amazing as always. Legato del Fantasma with Santos backstage chatting about Andrade. Then there was the backstage solo with Heyman chatting. And Heyman was sharing his uh, concerns about, you know, the bloodline being a little too cray-cray. And then Tomatonga came up. Got a problem. However, he talks. 
And then we had Randy Orton versus Tamatanga, which was a nice match. And of course, with what I was hoping would happen, Randy picked up the win. And then the bloodline attacked Orton. And in typical fashion of what I was hoping would happen, Kevin Owens came out to save the day. And as much as I love Kevin Owens, I love Kevin Owens. Uh, I love Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. I love Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. But in my brain, in my brain, I'm still a Randy Orton, Matt Riddle kind of guy. I miss that duo uh, more. And for Kevin Owens to be duoed with um, Sami Zayn. That's just my thoughts. Just a quick little video. Like I said, for the sake of consistency, I, I still wanted to go through with the video and I didn't want to double up on it and, and do like the whole two and one and then tie in the Saudi thing right after like I've done once or twice before. It's going to be a separate video. I'm going to go have some lunch and I'm going to come right back literally within five minutes or so. Like while this goes live, I'm probably in the middle of recording my uh, Saudi one. Not that that one's going to be like exciting or anything like that. So yeah. Thumbs up as always if you do like the video. It does greatly help support that channel again with the algorithm. This is a lot more than just uh, a happy feel-good moment that I get seeing two or three likes on a video. And if you didn't like the video, go ahead, give it a thumbs down, bend it in half, twist it, you'll get a solo Sokoan spike in the rectum. And uh, if you want to subscribe, exactly, naturally, that would be great. But if not, thanks for stopping by anyways. Take care. And maybe, if I'm lucky... I'll see some of you in the next one. Bye for now.